The best travel bag, in my opinion. Plus, Apple brings back an oldie but goodie. And so many chargers. Look, it's Micah Sargent. Time for iOS Today. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. iOS Today is brought to you by DoorDash. DoorDash connects you to your favorite restaurants in your city. Get $5 off your first order of 15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter promo code iOS Today. And by ExpressVPN. Protect your online privacy with one click. Yep, it's that easy. For three extra months free with a one-year package, go to expressvpn.com slash iOS today. And by Aftershock's unbelievably comfortable open-ear headphones. Hear music and crystal clear phone calls like never before. Visit iostoday.aftershocks.com and use the code iOS today for $50 off the tech bundle. iOS, iOS, iOS Today time. Hello, Micah Today. Sargent. Hello, Leo Laporte. Newest host of iOS Today. In case you missed last week, Megan Maroney is somehow disappeared. <laughs> we just floated Wait, hold her. on. <laughs> we floated her off the set. No, Megan's uh, moved on. I don't think she's announced her new job yet, so I won't say anything. But she's got a great new job she's very happy about. But we were very fortunate because we were in the process of hiring this young cat. And uh, brought him out from St. Joe, and uh, he is now the newest twit, Mr. Micah Sargent. So Welcome. exciting. Thank you yeah. very much. Great to have you. Happy to be here. And I'm, I'm assuming you're not an Android and Windows guy. <laughs> I'm just hoping. Yeah, you know, actually, I, this is all a facade. Yeah. Um, whenever I walk away from this desk, I put on Windows socks. Yeah, secretly, yeah. he goes home and uses Unix. That's his thing. Yep. Uh, no, we knew you were an iOS fan from way back in your work at iMore and so forth. And uh, so we were thrilled to get you on here with your shiny new 11-inch iPad Pro. Yes, it's about the size of my hand. So and your stuff. grossly inappropriate iPad, former iPad Pro <laughs> stand. That's all right. We're going to get you some stands. We'll, we'll find out. Actually, Micah was smart. He ordered the bridge keyboard that I've been using. Honestly, Leo, it was after the last show that we did together, and you showed me that bridge, it's and really I said, nice. I've got to have yeah. that. It's gorgeous. I've heard from some that they're having some QC problems with the manufacturer. You know, it's a small company, and, uh, you know, they were... Cr but I think that I, you know, I got the early earliest possible edition, uh, and it's been fine. There's been a, you know, occasionally it doesn't see the shift, like I have to really push the shift mm. key. Plus, you got to get used to turning it on. Which you don't have to do with a smart keyboard because right. it knows it already knows, but connects automatically. So <laughs> frequently, I'll have a password prompt or whatever, and I'll type, and it won't notice until the fourth or fifth <laughs> character, and then I go, oh, <laughs> it's like, oh, I forgot to turn it on. <laughs> oh, that's that's yeah. where I'm supposed. It would be nice, I think, if it had a feature where. It if, wakes up. It just doesn't wake up right away. Oh, okay. Oh, so it does eventually. <laughs> yeah, wake up. Gotcha. eventually it does. And that's to save battery, I'm sure. Anyway, yeah. I think you're going to like it a lot. It's a great stand, and the thing I love is that I can do this. I think the any angle of the that you want is a really nice feature. It's one of the features. Well, you can't do that, I guess. It's one of the really nice features uh, the, of the bridge keyboard that the Apple Smart Keyboard is. Does like. not do. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, today we're going to talk about Micah's long journey in a Conestoga wagon. <laughs> yeah. He went through I got the... dysentery twice, <laughs> but I survived because we've got modern medicine. <laughs> Instead of the Oregon Trail. Yeah. Uh, left through the St. Louis Arch, I hope. He uh -huh. went through that arch. The gateway to the, the New West. America. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, fortunately, uh, the Donner Pass proved no trouble because you came in summer. That yeah. was a smart thing to do. I did run into some uh, water moccasins when I was crossing. <laughs> uh, I can't remember what river it was. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I got here. I finally anyway, got we're here. we're thrilled. Actually, you haven't moved yet, but you're in the process. Mm -hmm. And so you thought today would be kind of handy since you're going to be living out of a suitcase a little bit to show some of your travel tips. Yeah, yeah. Good, so I brought some of mine too. Good, because I think, you know, everybody at different times travels and we've we've all got to figure out the things that we want to bring with us and the things that you want to leave behind. I spent uh, probably way too much time thinking about that because, well, for instance, we Lisa and I like to go on three-week cruises. Mm -hmm. And so you're, you're going to get on a boat and that's it. It's yeah, not you're like stuck. You're, you're stuck. You can't go get batteries. So you have to really kind of and and over time I've evolved. I think a, a, a process that's pretty good. I notice you start with a backpack. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I like what you have. You is that a Timbuktu? This 
Okay, so this is a Timbuktu backpack. And you know how I know it's that swirl on it. Okay, yeah. so you didn't even see the. the no, no, tag. no. It's yeah. this little. Uh, I love their logo. Looks kind of like a little fingerprint. Yeah. Um, now I have not been able to find this bag back in stock, which scares me, because here's what I love about this bag. So while I am kind of a, I'm a bit of an overpacker. I'm a huge planner like you. Wait till you see my and, backpack. And <laughs> um, I don't. There's something about not wanting to look like yeah. I've got a bunch of stuff with yeah, me. You, yeah, because, you know, people like Patrick Norton, who's a big guy, you feel like as big as he is, as stocky as he is, his backpack could actually tip him over backwards. It sticks out this far. Yes. He looks like a peddler. He's like got everywhere <laughs> in town. I've got... I've, Ten cups here. <laughs> got your, you got your got your flatware. You need some thread. I've got that. <laughs> yeah, anything. Toilet more. paper. So yeah, so that's the challenge: is to pack light but complete. But complete. And here's what's great about this bag, uh, specifically. And so I think you know, find the bag that does this if you are kind of the light packer. They made it so that the bottom pouch is sewn with the pocket sort of inside the bag. And what that allows you to do is put your big MacBook charger, your big uh, cables and stuff. And when you zip it closed, it sits inside of the pocket of the bag as opposed to bulking out. So it's like a marsupial backpack. It is. Yes. This is my kangaroo backpack. Uh, and that's that's really the big reason that I love this bag. It feels still small. It's not like, yeah. like you said, it being a big peddler with everything. And there are plenty of pouches where I can store everything that I carry with me. You want to see my backpack? I would love to. In contrast to yours. <laughs> yeah, let me keep this up then. Oh, it's also got a bottle opener. This I do want to note. <laughs> this oh is a peddler's goodness. backpack. But it has your name on it. That's kind of Well, nice. I know. That's really vain and stupid. But... but uh, <laughs> This is a Tumi, which is a kind of a high-priced... Uh, it's not a Tumi. It's a Tumi. Fancy brand. And one of the things on the Tumi, and this is leather, which is another reason that actually I, I, I sometimes reluctant to take this, because it looks like there might be something expensive in it, right? Yeah. It's real leather? Yeah. And I thought, well, if I put my name on it, nobody will steal it. <laughs> yeah, that's how that works. Yeah. Mm. Uh, <laughs> But I love Toomey stuff. Mm -hmm. I really do. And they also have a serial number inside. So if you lose it and you happen to find the one honest person in Budapest, they they can they can email Toomey. Okay, that's And Toomey will say, oh, neat. that's Leo's, and here's how you get it back to him. But just like yours, it, it, what, it, what it lacks, and I wish it had. The other bag I often use, it's more dressed down so it doesn't look so valuable, mm -hmm. is from eBags. And it does have uh, a little front pouch for the power supply. And I wish this had that. Um but it is nice. pretty hefty, and it has a big slot for the tablet or the pad, right? So that your, your laptop could okay. go right in there. Yeah, mine goes inside yeah. the main pouch. Uh, the other thing I look for, and I don't know if yours has this, but I like to keep my keys in my backpack. Yes. Do you I have a little my keys. A key hook, a little chain? I don't, so that's the one thing. I forgot that this didn't have a hook, so I was trying to find it to put my keys on, and it doesn't have one Yeah, of see, those. I think that's a feature that... Uh, it would be nice to have. I'm literally going to sew one into this bag much. when I get back. I'm going to. So the reason that you could do that also is because if you've got a lot of stuff in your bag, you can fish your keys out. Very now Leo can't find them though, so he's kind of. So I lied. What the hell is going on? <laughs> where's Did my you hook? Steal my steal my hook. It's in here somewhere. Oh my stars! Where is my hook? Oh wait a minute. See, it is there. Oh, is. there you go. So you just pull on that, <laughs> and there's your keys. Nice. It's not an easy thing, but you can get them. You can get it out that way. So, um, and this, by the way, another thing I recommend, and I don't remember where I got this, but I this is that. a keychain. It's not one of those. No, it's not? No, it's a chain, but what it does have is a quick release. <gasps> so Even you could better. just quickly take keys off and on of it. So if you, you know, you pull up and you want to give the valet Parker your key, it comes off very easily and it goes back on very easily without having to thread it through this. I like that. I've got, Yeah. I don't know if I have them with me now uh, to show off my own sort of quick release thing. That's key. Isn't that is it? key. Very yeah. good. I like get that. Get it? Good get pun. It? Get it? And there's the there's the serial number. See the barcode and everything. Now that, that's unique write that to each down. bag. Yeah, write that down. So if you find my bag, you know where to. So this. Oh wait a minute. Now this I'm interested in. This is called the night here. Let me see if it's better on the iPad. Isn't it funny how screen. geeks love stuff like geeks this? Geeks love stuff like this. Um, and each of these you can get them in locked ones that have locks on them. And here, let me. Make so they're sure. not. Removable. So they're not easily removable. Good. Or you can get one that don't have this plastic thing. So I twist this plastic thing, and then it allows me to move, open up that carabiner clip, essentially. 
And then okay, I like that. Them off, I can slide it back on, and then if it's so, if it's something that I'm going to be taking off and on a lot, yeah. then I will keep this uh, plastic part unlocked. But most of these keys stay on. So it's uh, it's kind times. of locked in. It's not easy for the valet to take it or whatever. Exactly. Look what you carry on there. Now this aren't you a smart be, fella? Yeah. Oh wait a minute! Now stop! Oh stop! So you have the adapter for the the uh, lightning to headphone adapter mm -hmm. for your your uh, iPhone. But in order to carry it on the keychain, you carry something special on the keychain, which is a little, one of those jacks, like a headphone jack. Mm -hmm. But is it specially, it's designed for a keychain because it has a little loop on it. Yes. And I wish I could remember the name of this company. Um, I've seen people make them, but it's nice that you could just buy them. Yeah. Amazon. And they're like super cheap too. Yeah. That's a great thing. So it's really nice to always have that. The problem is now that I've gotten so used to it being on my keychain, I forget that I have one on my keychain. So I'm always grabbing the, an extra one. Yeah. So maybe that's nice because I've got one extra just in case where maybe I you wouldn't never, have passed. The, the worst thing in the world is to get on an airplane oh, for golly. a long flight with small children and you, and you have no way of using your headphones. Or just with my own thoughts. Like, I don't want that. I don't want my thoughts. Yeah. No. Put my thoughts away, Distract please. me. <laughs> now, can I ask you about power? Because I feel that power is one of the biggest issues when we're talking air travel. Yeah. Um, and depending, you know, you might, you might run into that issue, kind of like we're, we're talking about, if you want to be able to listen to music or, or listen to podcasts or play games then that screen's going to be on a lot, especially for games or movies. And so I've got a few different solutions that I like to use for that on the plane. And uh, I'm a big fan of Mophie's different uh, products. And this is called the, let me find it, the Mophie Power Station Plus XL. And here's what's neat about this. It comes with an included oh, that's nice. lightning adapter. I never have the adapters I need. That's just part of it. Yeah. And so it very easily slides out. And what I like too is that it's about the size of, here, let me put this back on there, of my 10S Max. And so I can. Oh, it is exactly the size. Put That's my phone on cool. there and stick that in, and then it's good to go. Now, what's kind of cool about this um, as well is that it itself, along with being charged via, it charges with a lightning cable. So you oh don't need God, to bring... Oh, my God, I've never even heard of such a thing. Yeah, it charges... Oh, so Apple handy. and Mophie partnered um, to provide this functionality. You don't need to bring an extra cable with you, or if you forget that cable, you're... I feel like everybody's always going to bring their iPhone cable, at the very least, if you've got, you know, that device. Um, but this allows you to charge both your phone and your your charger itself with a lightning cable, and it's got pass-through. So at night, I can set this down... I can set my phone on top of it. I can plug it in. I can then plug the charger into the wall and it will charge my phone first and then charge my battery pack, which is really nice. And then last but not least is that it also is wirelessly chargeable. So it can't wirelessly charge, but you can put it down. I love how Leo's just digging everything out of his bag. <laughs> but you can put it down on a charging mat and then it will charge and if you like to be, um, while Leo continues to dig here, I'll tell you about my other charger. Um, I found it. I finally found my charger. I had to empty my whole bag. <laughs> this one charges via USB-C, um, and it lets you charge, you know, with a USB-A, normal USB-A cable. But this, my What's dear that? friends, What's that? is a wireless <gasps> no! charger. Oh, that's fantastic. And it's not, of course, charging. It's, it's a little bit picky. There we go. It's a little bit picky about oh, placement. And, yeah, that's always the problem with wireless, isn't it? Yeah, and so like I've I've had good luck with Mophie's chargers um, that sit on the desk, yeah. but with this mobile charger, it is a little bit picky. Uh, but I used it. I didn't have a way to charge on the plane uh, because I can't remember my cables were buried or something. And so, oh no, I was listening um, to a podcast with my. Uh, headphones that we'll talk about soon. And so I didn't have a way to charge while I was listening. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. And so that's where me. this is great because I was able to sit this oh, down on here clever. and still keep listening with my plugged in headphones. That's so clever. You can use the wireless charging while you're listening. While I'm listening. I think that's what Apple intended, but they did, neglected to make a solution yeah, that doesn't. They didn't do it themselves. <laughs> exactly. And so that's the Mophie Charge Stream Power that Station. That was our idea wireless. all along. Uh, but they, you know, they should have made, forget the power, whatever that silly thing was, they never ended up. Is it air power? Yeah. And make, 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 they should have made this, but thank you, uh, Mophie, because Mophie really does like Apple 
gear and they made something. Yeah, they made some great. And uh, you can also, because this is a wireless charger, I could place this uh, charger onto this one and charge it. <laughs> Wait a minute, what? <laughs> if I wanted to. Wait, what? Yeah, see, so this wirelessly, ch this has oh, a wireless that's charge Oh, that's confusing. So you option. have a battery that charges a battery. I have a battery that charges a battery. In case you need another battery. And what's funny is, if you just keep switching them, it's actually a, uh, what is that called? I Thank you, perpetual motion machine. Oh, you never run out. Yeah, that's how that works, right? <laughs> no. Somebody do the physics in the chat. Talk about physics. This is an interesting thing. So we actually did a thing on uh, triangulation and the screensavers about a new technology called gallium nitride, and it's a so you're all uh, familiar with uh, the traditional uh, silicon silicone based charging. Mm -hmm. But uh, there are other semiconductors. They tried gallium arsenide for a while, but it turns out gallium nitride is a really good semiconductor that, okay, I'm going to use a kind of uh, high-tech uh, science term. I hope it doesn't scare you. It makes the electrons slippery. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, that scared me. I don't know how it works, but it, but it means that you can get a lot more charging in a lot smaller space, you could charge faster. Wireless charging is more efficient. We're going to see more and more gallium arsenide uh, tech technologies. But this is one of the very first. So this is from Anchor. It's called the PowerPort Atom. Now, I'm a big fan of PD. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean what you think it does. It means power <laughs> delivery, and it uses USB-C. Right. Uh, now, the problem is, of course, you have to have a cable. I use Nomad cables because they're braided. They're gorgeous. And they, have, uh, they come with a little uh, strap. They're also a little pricey, but I feel that they last they longer last than so Apple's. They last so long, and I'm pretty yeah. sure they've got great um, protection if it breaks you. <laughs> you, could, you, can, you can bring it back. You and, can, yeah, leash a yeah. hippo with it, and even if it rips at that point, you could still get it, uh, get a new one replaced. So the it. thing that's, that's cool about this, this is a 30-watt charge charger in what looks like just a little plug that you you know that's got 30 watts of power delivery in yeah it. so that means it's it's ample to charge your ipad pro for instance and it's the size of the old iphone cube yeah it's basic it's a little little a bit bigger but it's a you know it's like a golf ball size i guess that's why they call it the the power port atom that makes no sense but anyway, <laughs> I like that theory <laughs> i i'm excited i think we're to see more gallium uh, nitride technology uh, it's not expensive, uh, but I really do like the fact that you got a lot of power in a very small. So this is a good little traveling. For traveling, thing. exactly. Yeah, and I carry it around, and I really love PD. the The sad thing, of course, is uh, that uh, you have to get a you'd have to get a special Type C to Lightning connector if you wanted to charge, which I have plenty I of. If you want to charge your iPhone, let's just. But I really like Type let's C. Just compare here. This would be the that's the, the Apple for my MacBook. laptop charger, yeah. right? Now that's I think eighty watts, but still, yeah, yeah, still. I mean, this is pretty good. This is actually Anchor's version of that, uh, which is um, their Power Port Atom big one for big boys. <laughs> big I, boys for big boys. And I've never opened this one up, so let me take the tape off. So here. small, isn't that great? That's lovely. I'm very excited about this technology, and I think we're I, gallium nitride is going to be a gallium a nitride. I think I take a vitamin in the morning that, that. <laughs> my, i need my gallium nitrides this is the pd2 so it has a dual it also has a light here which shows whether things are charging which i really like i love that and so that's a, that's about the same uh wattage i think as as yours but it's well if, give me give me your big one you can see the difference so there you know it's, it's not even massively still. it's not no. massively more compact and there are two on it but size i think makes a big difference and yeah you could charge your macbook or your macbook air or your MacBook Pro, as well as an iPad with one device, which I think is really uh, handy. That's so these lovely. anchors are these new uh, these new. Uh, there it is. That's this. Oh, it's only sixty watts, but that's still enough. USB C charger, um, also using gallium nitride. So they call these the uh, the atoms, and uh, I think we're to see more of these. This is one Absolutely. of the very first I've seen out there. I like. I'm I'm kind of all into power, and I'm all into anchor. And I'm I like really this. Into anchor Have you sure. seen this anchor? I've no. shown this before. This, if you run into a giant, as one often does, as one often does. Go ahead, give me the the two shot here, because you, what you could do is you could swing this around. <laughs> oh my god! And you can just clobber them. Yes. Okay. Or or you could plug it in the wall. <laughs> oh, that's not as. This fun. is also from Anchor, and so this is another solution because there's never hotels never have. More modern hotels now finally are putting in plugs, right? Mm -hmm. But usually there's one plug. You have to unplug the lamp. But see, this way I'm fine because this is from Anchor. It has one, two, three 
uh, regular, you know, uh, power plugs. What do you call those? You know, the, the ones that would look like the guy screaming. And then uh, <laughs> ah! plugs, I think. plugs. Yeah. and then it has three, uh, what Anchor calls their IQ uh, oh, yeah. USB charging, which means it will be smart about delivering enough wattage to the device. It draws the device. You have one of, that, yeah. one of those as well. This is just uh, here. Let's that's IQ charging. Yeah, that's yeah. the same. I love this because you've got four ports, one device. So you plug this into the wall. But uh, so may, I wish this had maybe a little bit more. There's one other negative thing on this anchor. This is I. What do they call this? Their uh, power port cube. The one other thing on this anchor that is a little annoying, but I think there's a. I, I'm sure there's a reason they do this. You don't get USB power unless you push this button on. Oh. So you can plug it in, you'll get power on all the regular plug sockets, but you don't get USB power unless you turn it on. So sometimes I'll forget to turn it on. Now does pushing the up. button turn off the AC power or do those... No, uh, AC power continues, it's just the USB. And I think that that's... I think some people don't want their stuff charging all day. Right? Yeah. So they like yeah, the ability to turn it on and off without unplugging it. I guess that's the theory. But anyway, it, just a little note you got to remember to turn it on. How hefty is not, the actual heavy. cube? Well, so you don't mind packing that in your bag or anything? It's pretty light. The one thing I would worry about is setting it down. I plug it in because this cable's so thick that oh, it yeah, fly off it. the table. You see it's moving around. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me... Yeah. I mean, I, you're right. On the other hand, if you plug it into a bunch of stuff, it's going to kind of that's, stay where, oh, that's where true. it belongs. Yeah, that's true. But that actually is a problem. It isn't It isn't like it. But again, I don't want it heavy. You don't want it I'm, exactly. I'm putting this it's in my a, backpack. It's a trade-off there. I have two of them. Lisa gets one. I get one whenever we travel. And I, we've, after trying a lot of these power, uh, different power I solutions. I like that. I'm this is, I think, the most compact and, and really great. Um, you mentioned batteries. I'll show mine one more battery because this is, again, power. PD, another great anchor. Anchor's kind of beat the Anchor king does stuff, a right? great job with it. Yeah. This thing is massive. So we haven't talked about watt hours, but uh, the number of watt hours in a device will tell you how much you could charge. This is a 20,000 watt hour device. So it's pretty heavy, mm -hmm. but you can charge up a lot of stuff. It's got PD as well as IQ USB type A charging. It's got, I, I like this, a the button. The indicator lights. Got to have that. And then when I pack it, it comes with, and one of the reasons it's a good deal, it comes with a, uh, a PD charger, so you can use that to charge it up. It uses PD to charge as well. Uh, and so I pack in this little ditty bag uh, the cables I need, the USB charger, Beautiful. and a 20,000 milliamp hour. And that's really the only battery pack now I carry on my trips because that can charge everything. Well, and we, yeah. With 20,000 hours, you could charge a phone and an iPad and even keep a laptop going. So this is, this is pretty good. I think this delivers... It's not a high, super high watch. I think it delivers 30 watts, maybe uh, maybe 50. But I, think I like that. What I like about these different devices is so it's more, it's kind of that anxiety of, it, like you said, if you're on a, if you're on a cruise ship or you're on a plane even, you can't get, for that short period of time, it's not there's there. not a whole lot you can do to sort of, uh, oh, I forgot to bring this and I need this. And probably when you came to Petaluma, you were worried about one thing particularly. I don't know what he's going to say. Water quality. Oh, so yes. And Anthony, I found this. So next time you go to the Philippines, you can have it. This somebody sent me this. I thought this was so clever. This is the SteriPen Traveler, and this sterilizes water. So it's a it's an ultraviolet light. I'm, I'm pretty sure this end comes off. <laughs> if it doesn't, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Let's see. Push twice for five li point five liters. Push once for a liter. What it does is it comes on. You put oh there. You put this in the water. That's UV sterilization. Uh -huh. I'm not going to turn it on because I don't want to blind you. Good. Uh, and then although if you misbehave. <laughs> <laughs> so see, yeah, but so, you can't get it off in time before I run away. The, the, yeah, I know that was a little hard. <laughs> Actually, it's probably good it doesn't fall off because exactly. this is fragile. But you put that in the water. It times it automatically. So that's why you have one push for a liter, two pushes for half a liter. And you can sterilize the water and make it safe to that's drink. That's incredible. Isn't that handy to have? Yeah. So when you travel, if if you are going somewhere where you're not sure, you know, a lot of times they say don't drink the water in, mm -hmm. in, in various countries. This this is a great thing to have if you're one of those people who, you know, says, well, I, it, 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 I, I, can want, I can only drink bottled water, but that I don't have any. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I don't trust the bottled water. You can do this. Whoa, that's a whole pen. new level. Well... I hate to say it, but there are places where they take bottles and they refill them with tap water and they 
use a little glue to seal it up and you think it's a clean bottle of water and it's not so that's why i haven't had any water in the past five days don't come to petaluma unless you got the stereo <laughs> uh, leo really i was hoping thing. you could show us the grid it because oh isn't this great I was do you use these two yes yeah. and i cannot find mine i'm so sad andy anako uh, told me about this years ago and i now have a whole host of these so the idea everybody you know what every geek knows about the grid it by now i, I hope so. So it's got a. This is the, the small one. They have various sizes. Mm -hmm. This has a little pouch. I keep my USB keys in there because I always carry about three hundred USB drives just in <laughs> just case. In case. <laughs> and then I, I kind of removed cables so you could see what I could do here. It's it's got these are these are elastic bands and they're all different shapes and sizes and directions. So it's easy just to strap the things you need right into it and remove them very easily. So really it's a cable tidying or cable organizational tool. Mm -hmm. And you see, I, I, I love these little um, snaps. Whoa. Oh, if Megan were here, she'd remember his name. We have a leather worker who comes by every once in a while and drops these off. He makes that's these. So nice. Isn't that clever? And you could put them and they, so it bundles up the cable in a way that's, uh, makes it very compact. This is another thing I always travel with. This is a micro router. So, this is from the folks at uh, Wi-Fi Consulting. They're a Washington-based um, VPN company, and they it's tinyhardwarefirewall.com. This plugs into your USB port. You pair it up to the hotel's Wi-Fi, and then you use this instead of the hotel's Wi-Fi, and it's Want. got built-in VPN and a Tor uh, uh, router, too, so you get an anonymity and security. And what this will do is, you know, you pow you plug it into your laptop or another reason it's great to have a good uh, a power battery. You can also plug it into here. You know, this is the, the anchor and it'll it'll boot up. And then I know what the, this becomes a Wi-Fi access point, mm. which I can join with. Uh, I think it's up to five different devices. So you can, you, you know, everybody in the family can access this and this access is the unsafe. I love that. Wi -Fi. I love so that. How did I not know about that? Yeah, tiny hardware firewall. They make a variety of them, and I'm, I've kind of keep up on what they've got. This is the most compact. It's the size of a USB key, uh, and so I can keep it on my cocoon gridded. But uh, I'm always, I've always got it. So now with both lights lit up, it is. In, you can configure it uh, from your browser and your phone or your laptop or your iPad. And once you've got it configured, you create a Wi-Fi access point with a name you know and a password you know, and you can give that to everybody in your party. I love that. And and you're all set up. So this is really great. And with a 20,000 milliamp hour battery like this, this is going to last, you know, several weeks. Without, yeah, without that's good to go. I'm juice. sure it's just yeah. sipping, sipping yeah. on power. That's the micro router. They make a variety of them at tinyhardwarefirewall.com. Hmm. Um, I was just going to mention the uh, the less fashionable solution, but, but one a good one that I, I just Vel Velcro cable ties. I buy those in a hook, roll. Do you hook and loop. Hook and loop. Uh, Yes. Velcro. Hook and loop fastener cable ties. Velcro. Um Yeah, I absolutely do buy these in. It's like a roll of, of th it's three rolls usually that yeah. I get. Yeah, me And too. I can always yeah. find cables to put them on. Yeah. And I introduced my family to them recently, and now they're all using them on everything. And I just think they're lovely. So the only reason uh, that uh, it's good to get a roll because they come off. And so when they're no longer on the cable, it's easy to lose them, but they're cheap. Yeah, well... I, so the ones that I get, they oh, yeah. have the little, they've oh, okay. got a little pocket. Yeah, so they, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or a little so hole they, so guess they don't come on. off. Okay, I take yeah. it back, yeah. And a little uh, tip for folks out there who are using hook and loop fastener cable ties. Um, last time I was on this show and I talked about Velcro cable ties, I got some some mail about the fact that I'm not supposed to say Velcro, so. That's BS. Yeah, it is BS. Say, you say Kleenex? I say. Do you say Xerox? I say Tissue paper for my face. <laughs> I, I never say Xerox. That's 1920s. This is up to the Velcro company to enforce their trademark, but everybody knows it is Velcro. So we're going to call You're not it supposed to say Photoshop as a verb either, but right. I do. Anyway, do. Velcro, hook and loop, I don't care. These are wonderful. But my tip is... I think if you say hick and loop, they think you're talking about the governor of Colorado. I don't think they, I don't think they really understand... I mean, Apple says hook and loop because they have to, because they're mm -hmm. a big company and they can't say it's a Velcro because it isn't. But these are Velcro. These actually, these are Velcro. They brand, are Velcro. So I can say that. Yeah. Um, so with these, the thing that I recommend is to make sure that the 
the loop side is on the outside. And why is that? Because the hook side loves to catch on to things. Oh, it's you're tiny, right. tiny, tiny, tiny little hooks. And so you put it on a shirt, you put it on some oh uh, a blanket, you start to get little fuzzies all over all the cable. All this time I've been doing it wrong. I learned it the hard way. And finally, uh, I realized, oh, I just need to put the loop side loop on out. the outside. Hook yeah, in. Loop out, hook in. Uh, that's how that dance goes, right? Holy cow. Loop out, hook it's, in. It's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Do yeah. the, the hook and loop and hook shake and it all around. Um, you know how it is when the plane's going down and the lights go out and there's just got that that lighting strip, but you can't see anything just like this? Yeah. That's why I have this. Ooh. <laughs> this is the awesomest thing. Where do I go? It's, it's blinding me. It's the, oh little, it's the little Larry. It actually has several modes. It also has... This is Safety. if you're on the road and your car broke down or you're on a, you know, you have a flat in your bike, you could put this red flasher out. Um, it is a really bright uh, LED light. Nowadays with LED lights, there's no reason not to have a flashlight in your uh, backpack. Exactly. You can get them they, so small. They're small. They last forever. The batteries, you know, remember the old days of flashlights, you know. Huge D batteries. You'd need it and you'd, it'd never work because the batteries are <laughs> drained by the time you open this thing. I don't think I've ever put batteries in it, and it just goes and goes and goes. The little Larry for the next time, the plane's about to go down. And then when you're in the water, you got the red thing, yeah, and you'll be here. the first to be picked up. How nice. How do you like that? I like that. I have for a kind of disaster times. mentality. Yeah, for <laughs> all the times notice. there's been disaster when I was on a plane, I know about the little Larry I've now. shown this before, but I'm going to show you because I don't think you know about this. Well, right now it looks like gaffer's tape on a pin. That's exactly what it is. And I credit Johnny Jet, the world's greatest traveler, with this. In fact, this used to be a bigger roll of gaffer's tape. But the last time we traveled, Michael's uh, bag got got kind of suitcase kind of fell apart, got a crack in it. Uh, this is a lifesaver. You should always have a little just and I put it on a pen because I don't want to carry a whole roll of gaffer's tape with me. But you always have a little bit of. Not duct tape. Duct tape is uh, probably not the ideal tape for this. Gaffer's tape is easy to remove. And unlike duct tape, it's easy to tear off a little piece of. That's the key to gaffer's tape. So whenever, you know, this is so good to have in your backpack. It's a pen, so you can fill out customs forms. And I just rolled a bunch of gaffer's tape around it. You could buy gaffer's tape on Amazon or somewhere. It's a special kind of tape. Gaffers are the guys who do lighting or gals who do lighting on movie sets. And, uh, and so this is a tape that's used widely in studios. So we have tons of rolls. In fact, we have so much gaffer's tape. Burke uses it to build pseudo Macintoshes and things like that. But this thing is a really, for literally strong enough to patch a suitcase. We got Michael home because, and that's why my roll is low. So I'm going to have to add some gaffer's tape to my pen. Well, and speaking of that, uh, a pro tip with gaffer's tape. So light is incredibly important when it comes to sleep. We know this about blue light. You can put it right over your eyes. You put eye. it right over your eyes. If you get Bell's palsy, you can tape your eye down. I'm really concerned that's going to be tough to come off with those eyelashes you got there. But we'll let Leo uh, hang out there. Um, light is incredibly important. We have these little, uh, little tiny organs in our brain. They, the, their function is to see light. And yeah. then by determining the amount of light, Wake actually, up. instead it's sleep it determines when it should be releasing sleeping chemicals. Yes. And so Melatonin. the reason I'm talking, yes. yes. And the reason I'm talking about this is because oftentimes I will go to a hotel room or, or what have you. And light. there's always some indicator LEDs. lights everywhere or those, and I don't know why they do alarm clocks bits off. with blue tape. Yes. You whenever, tear little bits off and you cover those whenever little holes up. Micah has stayed in a hotel room. All the little LEDs are covered. Are covered. It's true though. It's, it's, I, I, I didn't do it this time. I didn't do it this time. Let's see how easy it is to just make little pieces yeah, just right. The other thing do this it in is your handy home for, too, seriously. and uh, you can also use clothespins for this, but I don't want to carry clothespins around, <laughs> is taping the curtain shut because the curtains in hotel rooms never, never fully. Stay. Yes. yes. You're like, why is there just this bright line of sunlight? <laughs> and of course it always so directly annoying. hits your you eyes. You don't see it when you go to bed at night, but you sure do in the morning. You wake up and it's like, good morning. <gasps> So, yeah, you can make these small enough that you could put them on all the LEDs. That's really great. I never thought of that. 
Another reason to have a roll. A I do it roll. in my home too. The the monitor too. LEDs yeah. if they don't shut off or yeah, it's um, annoying. Yeah, I don't and I don't yeah. I don't need those indicators unless I need them, and so I can just take it off to see if I need to. I've showed this before, but I might as well show it again because this is if you have an iPad Pro, I'm going to recommend you pick this up too. This was the Kickstarter edition of the HyperDrive, and actually HyperDrives come in a variety of sizes and shapes. Uh, this is for my MacBook. You recognize it's got the two USB-Cs, and then it adds all the connectors. So instead of carrying a bunch, including, it, by the way, full size HDMI, instead of carrying around a bunch of dongles, That's it is nice. really handy to have. This one is for the iPad Pro, and they sell this uh, online, HyperDrive. It's a company called Sanho, um, and this is fantastic. So watch what happens. I, I uh, plug this in, and it's got a little um, strain relief lip oh, on it, nice. so it, and I got it to match my bridge case in my iPad. And now I've added input for power so I can charge it, which is really fantastic. I can get audio out. It now has an audio jack so I can use my headphones. So this is for an airplane, a lifesaver. Mm -hmm. I've got a micro SD and a standard SD card reader, USB type uh, three. So a, a type A connector for USB 3.1. And again, a full-size HDMI wow. port, which means I can drive a TV with this. When you get to the hotel, most TVs now in hotels do have HDMI ports. So you can, I download a ton of movies on my iPad. I use Netflix and Amazon Prime. I'm loaded, and I can always connect this up. Because they're not, most of the time, they don't support AirPlay. Yeah. I was in a hotel the other day, though, that did. I had Chromecast in yeah, the hotel here. But, that's exciting. Yeah, I was I'm like, oh, nice. I don't have to plug that. anything in. Yeah, this is great. Hallelujah. I'd love AirPlay. So these, uh, What's they all make... this extra stuff you have here? Well, this, I think it says Kickstarter. I think because I did the Kickstarter version mm -hmm. of this, it comes with if you wanted a, a little extra extension, if you wanted to not have it plugged into the side. Oh. You could have, but I, I like it right on the side like that. And then the little screwdriver with screws to attach that. And gotcha. A replacement oh, strain that's relief. Oh, nice. Yeah, I think that that's part of the Kickstarter package rather than the general package. But HyperDrive really does a nice job. If you have an iPad Pro 11 or 12.9, the new iPad Pro, uh, highly recommend this. Um, just really handy to have. Hmm. I have so much more, but you know what? I think we've done it all. There's there's a lot, <laughs> and we've done... Oh, no, I'm just yeah. off the desk. I really... It is a peddler's pack. You've got a lot there. Would this... you like some twine? <laughs> <laughs> I can actually sell you some gaffers cheap. Cheap. Uh, we thank uh, we thank uh, all of our fine vendors. Yes. Anchor, Hyperdrive, Mofi. You know what we do? We, oh, Mofi. I got a boy. Before you do the ad, one more do thing. One more thing. I. Oh, you bought that. These are the so I have the the old model the uh, the QC thirty uh, thirty fives I love those these are wonderful so yes. I can't I can't survive on an airplane without my these QC are the Bose 35s. Quiet Comforts now they're not the big over the ear ones they're in ear no, they're very but they nice do have noise canceling you'd have to remember to charge them though right before exactly. you leave exactly so yeah. you got to make sure you're charging and it's it it's US um, it's that old I hate that old USB micro USB connector but oh and look you you have extra dongles everywhere yeah it comes with one. <laughs> It is uh, ready to go. But this, I use these not just on planes. I, anytime I'm, I don't know if I'm washing dishes or. I have to, All the time. All huh? right. I can't think of what else it would be. <laughs> I need to use them for vacuuming or something. I, though it's great to have it anytime you've got that constant noise in the background that you just want to sort of block out. And you know, the other thing I carry in case I don't want to listen to music. I always carry earplugs. Earplugs. Uh, these are not, these are concert quality. They're co a company called Eargasm. I apologize to the children in the audience, but what's nice is they come in a in a you know little key keychain size carrying case, and these are the in ear monitor style flanges that really, if you get those deep in your ear, a you can't hear a thing, and b you can never get them out. <laughs> so this is this is what you're looking for. They do have a little tab. So carry some tweezers with yeah, you. No, I, I've never lost them, as you can see. Uh, these. Because sometimes we'll go to shows and I always forget them, so I carry these on my keychain just so that I always have. Because you got to protect your. Uh, now, your are these ears. the kind where you can still hear? Yeah, they're designed. They're what they call high fidelity earplugs. So, I don't know how high fidelity they are, but they're they're theoretically they pass it sound through so that you don't lose. You don't. It's not like you're listening. You're not to completely the blocked and, off. Yeah, not you can still. Anything. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, and ever since I started working with you, I carry a little bit of Advil with me. Me too, actually. <laughs> I've got a little bottle of unopened Advil as well. That's, it's only 10 doses, but it's enough to get you through the night. That's what I'm saying. Uh, what else? Oh, 
And, you know, pack of playing cards. Oh, yeah. It's always good to have those. Make sure they're sealed so that when you, uh, when you take the 10-year-old for a ride uh, on the plane... He thinks you're not cheating. Okay, very gotcha. important. Gotcha. Very important. Do you have the, your your vibration headphones with you? Because I was. Oh, not, I love these. Not Actually, so much don't for, wear them on the airplane. Right, not for on the airplane. But while I was here, um, I had been thinking I'm walking around, and it'd be nice to be able to hear yeah, they're what's gonna, around me. We're going to do an ad for them in a little bit, but, I, oh, but these well. aftershocks are. <laughs> you didn't even know, did you? I did not. I these promise. aftershocks <laughs> are really, really great. But yeah, they're not headphones for the right, airplane. Yeah, unless, I wouldn't wear them on the airplane. Unless you're so paranoid, you say, "Well, I want to listen to music, but I." Don't want to miss any announcements. In case there's an emergency announcement, yeah. I got to get out my Actually, little Ricky. Might be okay for that. Called, little um, Ronald. But I wear them around uh, the house all day because for conference calls and so forth. We'll talk about that in a yeah. second. Cool. Anything else? Do we mention everything? I think we got it. We have so many gadgets, so many different things. I'm glad to know you're a peddler too. Yes, a peddler with with a slimming pack. <laughs> My back is not slim. <laughs> <laughs> and there's hey, the one thing we never have to <laughs> one thing we never have to worry about. However, when we're on the road is food because they will bring us food. Who is they? The Dashers <sighs> from DoorDash. We love DoorDash. DoorDash connects you to your favorite restaurants in your city or if you're on the road in the town you're visiting, if you're sitting there in the hotel Can I in tell Petaluma you? and you're hungry, they saved my life, Leo. I'm not kidding you. When I got into town, I hadn't eaten since I got on, since before I got on the plane in Kansas City. <sighs> Terrible. I get to the hotel. I say, hey, DoorDash, boom, they come. I I was so happy to see the DoorDashers. And I always tip my Dasher because they're yes. nice people. Oh, yeah. They're they're really great. I, D DoorDash is, is really, it's an interesting company because they don't hire the Dashers. They make connections between restaurants and Dashers. But by the way, put the DoorDash app on your phone put it on your tablet, put it on your computer, because the time will come when you'll say, oh, I'm starving, and you want to be able to quickly pull up a DoorDash mm -hmm. and get some food. Ordering's easy. You use the app to choose what you want. The Dasher will bring it to you anywhere. And that's In fact, let me show you the DoorDash in Petaluma because yeah, well, we have a pretty good selection. They've got all the major names, right? You've got your Subway if you're in the mood for a sub, and they've got Wendy's. Let's see who, have, who else we've got here. Um they oh Chipotle I always get a little Chipotle Mac Mac Mickey D's El Pollo Loco, uh this is closed right now but my favorite hamburger in Petaluma is the Habit. Do you have you tried the, the Habit? Habit? Yeah, mm -hmm. oh it's good. Applebee's, you can get a pint of Baskin Robbins. Whoa! Oh yeah, they'll deliver it fast oh, enough. Oh absolutely, but also great restaurants that are unique to a town that you're in, and it shows you how long it's going to take. It shows you if they're closed, which is great. By the way, it's other stuff too. Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory. What? Fruit in Motion for ju for for delicious uh, uh, juices. Wow! Look at all that. I'm, Coffee. Now I'm, what can mm, I get Starbucks? here at the studio? Hmm. Uh, Acre, which is our local coffee company. I like it that they have both the big chains, so you know what you're going to get. But also the local restaurants. Three hundred ten thousand restaurants in total. All 50 states, the U.S. and Canada, 3,300 cities. Don't worry. And, oh, Cheesecake Factory. You know, the biggest menu I've ever seen. Go to the Cheesecake Factory on DoorDash. You will. Sp it's like 80 pages. You'll go. And, but there's everything. Anything you want, they've got. <laughs> everyone and huge portions. Don't too. worry about breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or even maybe an after-dinner snack. It'll all come to you with DoorDash. Right now, $5 off your first order of $15 or more. If you download the DoorDash app and use the promo code IOS today, this is actually probably the most important travel tip of the day. Every time I go anywhere, you got to have the DoorDash app on your phone. Set it up because you can get food right away. What did you order? Uh, oh, boy. I got gluten-free pizza and did some sort of- They have that? Yes. This was Mary's Pizza Shack. Oh, Shout Mary's out. is good. It was so good. Yeah. And then I ordered breakfast from the coffee shop you just mentioned. What <laughs> was it? Acre. I don't remember. Yeah. And it was- Oh, God. Oh, you're living locally. That's good. good. Thank you. I like it. But living La Vida DoorDash. Local. <laughs> La Vida Local. Uh, that's DoorDash. DoorDash. Dot com, but actually, the best thing to do is open the app store on your iPhone or Android and download the DoorDash app. And don't forget, if you use the code IOS today on your first order, you'll get $5 off your first order, $15 or more. IOS today. And that's how we like you to do that because that lets them know you, you heard it here and that helps support the show. Thank you, DoorDash, because they help support the show. And apparently, and me. keep Micah from passing out. Yeah. Before breakfast. Did, did you have it today? No, this was yesterday. yesterday. Oh, that's a nice awesome. sand, a nice uh, gluten-free egg sandwich. 
and some chia seed you are, pudding. You are lucky because you are actually in gluten-free land. I Everywhere. It's so <laughs> lovely. I'm walking around like... Oh. <laughs> I'm surprised you could get gluten-free in Kansas City, to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> you can get ribs in Kansas City. Oh, yeah. But I gluten-free, I don't know. I didn't, it it's, doesn't it's seem like a, up. a gluten-free headquarters. It's Whereas certainly not HQ. Northern California, this, you are in gluten-free land. You, if you're looking for wheat, it's hard to find. For weed? For wheat. Oh, wheat. I was going to say, you can find weed too. We, uh, it's all legal here. <laughs> Everything but wheat. Everything is legal. Yeah, wheat and is illegal in the state of we California. We do not allow any gluten in our in our town. Uh, let's uh, quickly uh, scam, scan scam. The, <laughs> scam the news. There is a story. It's not really an iOS story, but I should mention uh, there's a big story today, which is Apple has released new uh, 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 MacBook Airs, which I yes, my favorite. Yes. And the new MacBook Pro, lowest cost one. These are the low cost items for college. It's the mm -hmm. back to school crowd. And if you're a college student, a MacBook Air at nine ninety nine. That's the that is the that is the laptop for a college. Crowd. I agree. It's I, light. It's not the most powerful, but powerful enough. I I mean I use my MacBook Air daily. Mm -hmm. I love my MacBook Air. So that's. A very very good thing. And now, if you get a MacBook Pro, you are you your touch model touch bar, no matter what. Yeah, that kind of they, there's no more escape. They they made you can't these, escape the MacBook Escape now has a touch bar. I like the fingerprint reader. Not a fan of the touch bar. I okay, so I got to tell you, you like it. I, I like it now. I uh, it took me. I well, of course the the fingerprint reader, but the idea that I can put little quick actions up there is going to be really handy. So there's for two me. things now. There's better touch tool, which I really like. Get that. Because uh, that means you can completely control it. And there's a new one that actually puts your uh, Macintosh dock on the touch bar. What? And I don't know why Apple didn't think of this, but that's obvious, that's right? That's wonderful. Put, hide the dock, put it on the touch bar. Finally, a good use for the touch bar. Mm. They added the True Tone display to the MacBook Air. Uh, so that's, I guess, an improvement. And these are all 8th generation Intel processors. And But uh, the main thing to me is the price drop is a very exactly. big deal. Very big. Apple needs to have a $1,000 laptop, I think, for students. And it's been too long for that option available. And, yep. you know, when you and I get questions, uh, what Mac should I get? Well, I know you, and I know you don't want to spend a bunch of money, so I really don't know what to tell you. I feel like we should do the FaceTime so the new uh, yes. iOS 13 came out yesterday. If you're in the public beta, we all downloaded the public beta. And I feel like we should demonstrate this. But I don't know if we can really can do it properly. Can both of us FaceTime each other? Can I FaceTime you? Uh, yeah, I'm sure you can. So this, there's, so they're using the AR, the augmented reality. We won't, by the way, it's good you went to your phone. It won't work on anything but an iPhone XS uh, or uh, uh, 10 because it, no, that it needs the face stuff on the front of the camera but it's going to use ar and as you know as everybody knows when you're using facetime you look at yourself right yes you're not looking at the camera um Here, what's I'll your put it, i'll put in my put number. your facetime id in there because I'd, I'd really like to see if we can get this to work so and i do this with my mom in fact when you've seen mary on our show you know i'm always saying mom don't look at me <laughs> look at the camera it's really bad on an iPad because the camera's off to the left. She says, but I'm not looking at you. I said, no, it's a little confusing. So let me FaceTime you with video. We'll just see if this is going to work. Okay, look at the camera. So that's going to be normal. Okay, Don't open your eyes real wide, just okay. normal. Look at the camera. Mm -hmm. Now look at me. Look at the camera. Now look at me. Okay. If you were wearing Old Spice, oh no, that's the wrong ad. <laughs> that's an ad. <laughs> that's pretty good. So it's subtle and it doesn't work if you look really far off. But it does, I, honest to God, it's kind of creepy like the Mona Lisa. You're following me around. Yeah, and I just don't like what it does with It's not doing eyes. it with me. Now watch, this is without it. Right? I'm looking at your face. Yes, and, and your eyes like? on here looking at my face, not at the camera. Yeah, that's because I have a lazy eye. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll have my eyes wide. That is weird. That is really weird. Okay, it works. It works. It works. Boy, that was a long way to go. We, you know, we got there. I feel like I ran a marathon today. I'm so proud. I'm so proud of us. That is uh, now available if you have the public version, public beta version of iOS 13. It came out want, yesterday. If you want to have that fun dance with FaceTime, you can do that by getting the public beta. The App Store is 10 years old today. Or someday. Happy someday of, in the history. That's uh, that's pretty cool. That now. Yeah. 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 The design evolution 
this is neat. Of the earliest apps. So remember, we celebrated the 10th anniversary of the iPhone's release a couple of months ago. Now it's the 10th anniversary of the iPhone store. And the this... apps have evolved, but so has the look. Look, at this is the icons that have changed over a time. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, isn't so it? this is a write-up on, on 9 to 5 Mac that I think everybody should definitely check out. I do like the new flat icons I love compared them. to these modeled 3D kind mm -hmm. of... Ugh, they just look dated now, don't they? Yeah, and that's what I was thinking about that because obviously at the time we didn't feel that way. No, but and now we look back. Here's like, Facebook Ugh. in the, in the you know in the early app store. Oh, look when it got stories and no one used them. How cute <laughs> that they all used them on Instagram. So Facebook won. Either way, uh, this is a lot nicer looking, I think. And I'm looking mostly at the Chrome, the window, uh, you know, the, the stuff it got on the less, window. Yeah, it's really pretty ugly with 3d and minimal minimal design is good but again it's it's kind of taste isn't it i think After it is while. because i can remember being super excited about the i think it was the voice memos recorder yeah um and having all of those like buttons i could switch <laughs> and stuff and the velvet beige yeah yeah so this is uh this is facebook's icon again all the icons evolved kind of like this because originally they had this kind of three-dimensional web 2.0 look <sighs> glossy flat do we all agree that's better now? Really? I'm, I think it is. I think it is. And, yeah. I, well, and I think that a part of that is our displays. Our displays have gotten better. And so those flat icons can really still bring a lot to the table. Whereas in the past, to sort of get anything to stand out, you had to have some some gloss and pop and flash. I think the it's also... It's like when you wear lip gloss. You know, you really want to pop out. I, I, but you I, always need I try to use the one with glitter. Yeah. Yeah. But, but that glitter, was like, yeah. gets everywhere. Right. So I'm glad we're glitter free. These we're days. <laughs> glitter and gluten free. <laughs> glitter and gluten free. So uh, we're going to take a little break. When we come back, we have questions, some feedback. Uh, and don't forget our app cap. And I'm just going to mention that my app cap is a returning Apple app in honor of the 10th anniversary of the App Store. Wow. Something that was really popular 10 years ago. And it looks that way. It really does. Our show today brought to you by Express VPN. You know, when you're, we were talking about this earlier, when you're in a hotel, when you're in a coffee shop, when you're on open Wi-Fi access point, everybody else using that Wi-Fi can see you and can see what you're doing. Plus your ISP can see what you're doing. If you're looking for privacy and security, you need to use a VPN, Express VPN. It runs in the background of your computer or your phone. It's easy to start. There's apps for every platform. You download the app, click to connect, and boom, you're done. That's it. And you use the internet exactly as you would normally. The nice thing about ExpressVPN, they have VPN servers all over the world. So you can emerge in the public internet anywhere you want to, but it also means it's faster. And that's really important. ExpressVPN is the fastest VPN I've ever used. It costs less than $7 a month. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you're not risking anything. You don't want to use a VPN and feel like you're somehow a second-class citizen. With ExpressVPN, it is the same experience. You're enjoying high speed. They're using a, a very new cutting-edge server technology they call Trusted Server. And here's why you'll like it. It prevents the operating system and apps from ever writing to the hard drive. So nothing, nothing can come into your system while you're using ExpressVPN <laughs> and damage it. And it makes sure that they have no information about what you're doing. And that's important. You want to use a VPN provider that doesn't log, that doesn't track, that can't give your information or sell your information to anybody else. It's a whole new standard of privacy and security. A great way, great, another great reason to use ExpressVPN's trusted server. Stop hackers, stop big brothers, stop internet companies from grabbing all your data. And don't use a VPN provider that does the same. Use the one that keeps your privacy protected. It's ExpressVPN. Go to expressvpn.com slash iOS today. You'll get an extra three months free when you buy a one-year package. E-X-P-R-E-S-S. -S, express, spell it out like the real word. ExpressVPN.com slash iOS today. Three extra months free with a one-year package. Visit expressvpn.com slash iOS today and protect your online privacy now. They really do have apps for everything. That's what I like about them. I uh, yeah, get it for all sorts button. of stuff. And you're done. Michael from Camarillo, California, says, I have a question about a product Apple bought a few years ago, and I honestly don't remember this. It was called Swell, it was a podcast discovery app that would generate a list of episodes, including old radio broadcasts, based on what you listen to. Did Apple ever absorb it into its podcasts app? 
my I don't see recommendations in Apple's podcast. The only thing I think maybe Tutorial. they might have. So remember, when Apple uh, buys companies, sometimes they buy their technology for reuse, like texture, mm -hmm. and they put it into News Plus. Sometimes it's what we call an acquire, A Q U I H I R E. They're hiring an, a talented engineering team, and then using that engineering team and they may not even assign them to the same product right the, it is possible and I I don't know we'd have to we'd have to find a source inside Apple to tell us because Apple never says that the recommendations for podcasts you do get on iTunes right mm -hmm. and I guess now if you're on uh, Catalina you'll see it in the podcast app on Catalina uh, those probably I mean a recommendation engine is a valuable thing absolutely it'd be my guess that they're taking the swell team and their technology and their knowledge about recommendation engines and applying it to everything that's the board I, so i like that idea i also like the idea of you know the the apple has editorial teams for all sorts of different uh for the app store for podcasts oh, maybe they're et just using that internally yeah. they could be using that to help yeah. them figure out what they want to recommend It'd be an easy start rather than like trying to find all of those podcasts all over the place. But I'll ask around. Uh, I, I intentionally don't maintain sources inside of Apple because I just don't want to get too close to the enemy. But <laughs> I prefer not to, not to, I don't want to get in that situation. But I do, we do have people like Renee Ritchie who are well connected. And mm -hmm. I'll ask and see if anybody knows what happened to the what Swell to team. Swell? What are they it doing? It sure was Swell. Steve writes and says, I found ways, this is a, a problem with blocking caller ID. Uh, when, when there's no caller ID, how do you block that person? Now, he says he found this on the web. It's maybe worth trying. It's certainly no harm in trying it. My experience is this isn't going to do much, but mm -hmm. if you create a contact with a, all zeros is the phone number, zero, 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 Zero 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 zero, and block that. Uh, he says that helps, but oh well. Wait a minute. He is getting three to five calls a day from an unknown caller that has no number to block. Is there a way to block those? No. What I do that does not. Yeah, that I've that does not work. There yeah. are some other options. Sometimes those zeros will work uh, because sometimes uh, the. So here's what's happening. It's the it's the robocall epidemic. Mm -hmm. It is the vast majority of phone calls now on cell phones across the country, around the world. And w the person who's calling you, the spammer is calling you, can enter in, literally enter in the number that they're calling from. Mm -hmm. And they can pick any number because there's no authentication in the system at this point. So there's no way. So uh, maybe if you're getting robocalls and the guy's lazy, he's going zero, 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 zero. <laughs> and that will work. But it will not work if they're blocking the caller ID and so forth. And here's my problem. Uh, my doctor, and I bet this is true in a lot of uh, situations because of patient privacy, yes. always calls without caller ID. Mm -hmm. He he doesn't want, I don't know, my wife to know he's calling me. I don't know. But they, they, for reasons of patient privacy, mm -hmm. they use, no. they block caller ID. There is really no way to prevent those calls from coming through. And if it's your doctor, you don't want them to come through. But here's what I do. I use Google Voice. And one of the features of Google Voice, it's a free service from Google. You could set it up right now, voice.google.com. You could create a new number, or if you want, port your old number over to it. I would create a new number and start giving that number out. But you can say what call handling goes on. And so if it's somebody in my favorites, they go right through. If it's somebody in my contacts, you can decide whether they should go through or not. You could, they have call screening. So you could say, let make that person announce themselves. And you could do that with... If, if there's oh. no caller ID, you could say, make that person announce themselves. I'll be honest, with no caller ID, I say straight through to voicemail. My phone doesn't ring. I don't see that person. And I figure if it is my doctor, leave a voicemail. Maybe they won't. Maybe they don't. Maybe they'll say, this is you know who. And I'll leave. <laughs> and I'm, uh, I'm, <clears throat> I have your test results. <clears throat> so call me. <clears throat> Quickly. Quickly. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if they would do that. I actually, that I've never, you know, I don't get any calls from my doctor, so maybe that is working. Now, you have a, a third-party solution that works very well, I think. Yeah, so I don't know why it's not loading right now, but normally it does work. Um, Probably because you're on iOS 13. That's what it is. I've ruined everything. Uh, there are, are two options I want to talk about. Not every... Not every carrier is going to have the same feature sets available. And the problem with... A lot of times I kind of recommend against using carrier stuff. They've got like, oh yeah, just download our, download our app and then you can track the location yeah, of your phone. I don't want to do that because they can that. too. Yes, exactly. Right. However, 
Um, I use AT&T. One of the things that AT&T does have is a very nice feature for uh, call identification and blocking that happens on their end as opposed to on your phone locally. I see that now on T-Mobile too. I think a lot of the callers are doing it and they'll say spam detected or spam, possible spam. And mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. um, and there is a new technology that's coming called Shaken and Stir. And a few carry... <laughs> They're apparently Bond fans. Yeah. A few carriers are starting to ad adopt this. And this is an authentication. Remember I said that you can right now, just like in an email, use any uh, phone number you want mm -hmm. and spoof it. And that's the thing that's most annoying to me. When I get a call from our area code and my exchange, I, is that my neighbor? Is there an issue? Is it the school calling? What's going on? You almost feel like you have to answer that. So shake it and stir are two protocols. One has to be used on the calling system i think that's stir and one on the receiving system that's shaken and it authenticates it says no oh. this person is calling from this number it is one of our numbers it's one of our subscribers and then the incoming company can I'd validate that and what they can do if they wish is to say well if that's not the real phone number we'll block it so this is a really i think an important technology it is not fully adopted yet it's coming out the fcc is really encouraging it uh, I think more and more companies are, are saying they're going to do it. By the end of the year, it would be my guess that Shaken and Stir will be implemented on all the big carriers. And you Please. will, and this might solve this bane of robocalls. At least it'll solve number spoofing, and in particular, neighbor spoofing. That's what that is when they yes. do the area code and the exchange you're from. It's called neighbor spoofing. It is illegal, but most of these callers are from outside the United States, and they're immune to prosecution. So it's not stopping anybody. And I don't think I mentioned the app. Uh, what was that? True Robo, Killer? Robo Killer. Robo Killer. Yeah. So Robo there's No Mo Killer. Robo. There's Robo Killer. There's True Caller. All most of these require some cost, usually minimum. Mm -hmm. The reason I don't use some of them, and I'm not sure about uh, Robo Killer, but No Mo Robo requires you route your phone calls through their servers, and mm -hmm. I don't want to do that either. Right. I don't want them to have my phone calls. So that's really the only way they can do it because they have to look at the call yeah. see what it so is. So is that how Google's Google Voice works? It um, works through their servers? No, it's it's what it is it's really a virtual switchboard. Okay. So I love Google Voice and the reason I use it is because I have multiple phones and so I have one Google Voice number uh, and that rings five up to five different numbers. So the number I just gave you for instance, is not the actual iPhone number. It's my Google Voice gotcha. number. Gotcha. And that will ring my iPhone, my Android phone. It'll ring my computer, my home phone, up to five numbers. At no cost, this is a free service. It does all of that great caller ID stuff. Uh, it also, there's a lot of nice features to it. I hope they keep going. <laughs> You never know with the yeah, Google. Google Reader. Google, yeah, yeah, never know. But voice.google.com, for now, it's free and a great service. They bought a company called Grand Central and a, that, oh. that did this, and they and they, uh, and they offer it. And you can choose a number. And I actually choose, chose a vanity number. that. It, and this is a little pro tip that's not in my area code. It's in Baltimore. Oh. So if I get a phone call from Baltimore, guess what? You it's know. spam. Yeah. I don't know anybody in Baltimore. <laughs> and if Baltimore. you're in Baltimore and you've been trying to call me, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but that it's true. I get so many calls from, from the 302 area code. And I know immediately, oh, that's, that's a spoofed number. That's smart. Clever, huh? Yeah. Uh, one more. All right. Should we do one more and then we'll, uh, we're going to get ready for our app caps. Paul from Los Angeles via Sydney. So I guess I should do it like this. Good morning, gentlemen. No, maybe I shouldn't. I'm a former film journalist about to write a book which will include interviews with Australian filmmakers and actors who made it in Hollywood that I knew in the early days. People like Hugh Jackman, Mel Gibson, Nicole Kidman, three of our favorites, right? Anyhow, I want to know what the best iOS transcription and recording apps are available for either in-phone or in-person interviews. Thanks. And I have uh, some great recommendations because... Didn't we just share one on iOS? Today? We did. Yeah. And uh, uh, I wish I could remember what the name of that one was. Yeah, no, I'm just struggling I to have remember it. I have it on here. Oh. Otter.ai. This is one solution. This is actually not the one I got from uh, Farhad. Uh, but this is a very cool one for meetings. You get uh, you get f uh, 10 hours, I think, of free minutes, where you can pay for more if you want. 6,000 transcriptions minute per month if you pay for it. It's only $10 a month, so I think that that's or $100 a year. I think that's very, very fair. But 60, 600 uh, minutes for free it uses real transcriptionists it's not using computer transcriptionists which is great and this is really designed for recording meetings 
So this is a really good one. I use uh, also use Record Up, which is something that um, uh, this is. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this is the one that um, I'm going to link it to my Dropbox because that way, when you record something, it automatically goes to your Dropbox. Hold on a second. Allow. Okay. So this is record up. You can use this to record conversations, phone conversations, or, or so forth. It goes to Dropbox, and then uh, you can see it's uploading it immediately. Oh, how nice. Which is really nice. And then uh, this is, this is that's all it does. It records. It'll uh, record in the background. You can have it on higher quality. You can actually have it record on launch, on launch which is nice. great if you want to catch your boss in the act. You just, hey, you know, it starts recording now, right away. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> so Farhad wrote a great column called, I didn't write this column, I spoke it. Now he's similar to what you're doing. He's using Record Up, a cloud-connected voice recording app. We just showed that, mm -hmm. that records. So if you want to do an interview or whatever. And then he uses Descript. Now this is a website, but there's also an app. Descript is a really interesting idea. They will, they will do transcriptions, automatic and human-powered, of whatever you send them hmm. so this is a re this is what farhad uses he's a you know he's a very uh well-known journalist he was for a long time the technology journalist at the new york times he's currently opinion writer there but this is a fantastic tool and uh, i've been very impressed by what they do you could do it through the web I, I can't remember. I don't see an app on my iPad, so I think that's probably how I'm doing it is through the web. The web. But they will do transcriptions. It's fairly affordable. Um, you, uh, like like, uh, like uh, Otter, you get a certain amount of basic per month. Um, 15 cents a minute if you pay as you go. $20 a month, you get four hours a month. Uh, you can export and edit audio and video, uncompressed audio, video support, unlimited version history. The idea, which would be great of this, is that uh, for people with video, you could eat, add transcripts to your video, things like that. I think this is just a great solution. This is what Farhad recommended to script. And then again, otter.ai, I think, is also very good. Um, and then uh, Record Up is the app that uh, I was using. Although there are a great many uh, apps yeah. on iOS. Just Press Record is the one that I uh, use because Apple it has Watch. a Apple Watch mm -hmm. version. I remember and Serenity so, Caldwell famously was yeah. very into uh, yeah. that one. So if audio quality isn't, key and by the way the apple watch actually surprisingly good audio recording quality yeah. if audio quality is not key just the ability to no matter what wherever you are press a button and you can put that button right on the watch face and record the conversation you're having is really really useful because i'm a spy yeah now he mentioned he does it on the phone it's a little more complicated with the phone but you can get devices that will connect to the phone and record um, the device that does it the best is called a henry box oh. and you can look around and find henry boxes that are designed it went in the early days of the of Twit, uh, before we had all this fancy technology, I used a Henry box to uh, record the Skype audio and, and so forth. So that might be just a little additional hardware you, you'd need. Now, is that spelled H-E-N-R-I or H-E-N-R-Y? It is spelled not like your Chihuahua, but like my son. Gotcha. With a Y. With a Y. With a Y. Gotcha. All right. There's our questions. Let's get to our app cap in just a moment. But first... We were talking about open ear headphones. These are the king of the hill. I love our aftershocks. And you know, I do have the the case and I carry them around with me all the time. Aftershocks I use a patented bone conduction technology, which is really kind of amazing because they don't go in your ear. We just saw a piece that said AirPods are dangerous because they go in your ear but they don't seal your ear. And as a result, people tend to listen too loud, damaging their ear. These don't go in your ear at all. They go over your ear. This light titanium band holds them in place. Oh. So they're great for exercise. They're great for runners or bicyclers outside because you could still hear traffic. You can hear people. You can hear sirens. So you're not at risk when you're wearing your headphones. You're not isolated from the world. But the music sounds great. It's also great for phone calls. And I use these for all my conf conference calls at home, I, it has multi-point pairing, so I have it paired to my phone, but also to my Macintosh. And when I'm doing a conference call, I wear these. They're so comfortable, I f often forget to take them off. Wireless Bluetooth 4.1, multi-point pairing, as I mentioned. IP55 certified, that means they repel sweat, du dust, and moisture. So you can run in the rain. You don't have to worry about sweating during your workout. They're they're nice, nicely covered with that soft touch um, uh, finish 
which repels moisture anyway and never feels, you know, icky or sweaty. And because they're not in your ear, I feel like these are just made for exercise. Six hours of continuous music and calls on a single charge. Ten-day standby time. They charge fast, too, just about an hour and a half. I always have them plugged in so when I'm running out the door or when I'm getting ready for a conference call, they're ready to go. And, of course, a hassle-free two-year warranty. Aftershocks. They spell it S-H-O-K-Z. They're safer for driving. They're safer for running or biking. It's what I, I... And they're the most comfortable headphones you'll ever wear. And if you're worried uh, that the sound on your cheekbones, which is where the sound comes through, isn't isn't going to be good enough, not only is it good, they come with a, a little bit of... Um, they come with uh, earplugs. Oh. And when you put in the earplugs, you realize, oh, it isn't coming... Not only is it not coming through my ear holes, it sounds better with earplugs in. So maybe that is what I should do on the airplane. Wear earplugs and wear my aftershocks. we got a great deal on the aftershocks tech bundle right now. You get the Trex Airs, the ones I'm holding, a pop socket for your phone. Every phone has to have a pop socket. A large portable storage case. I use that. It's silicone. It's great. And a portable power bank. So you can keep them charged and a travel tumbler insulator so you can announce to the world you too are an Aftershocks fan. I'm a massive Aftershocks fan. When I discovered these, I stopped using everything else. Go to iostoday.aftershocks.com. Use the code iostoday at checkout for $50 off that tech bundle. That's, I'm sorry to say, are for only valid in the U.S., but we love our Aftershocks. And even if you're not in the U.S., you ought to get some. iostoday.aftershocks.com. And the code IOS today gives you $50 off the tech bundle. Love my Aftershocks. You will too. Thank you, Aftershocks, for making a great product. I want everybody to know about it. Do you have a pair? No. We got to get you a pair because. Uh, I'd like to give them a listen for sure. Uh, you, will, you will really be amazed. And man, uh, I know you used to write the transcriptions of the um, Apple calls. That what would a, be nice for that. Yeah. Yeah. What a pain to have time. to. Yeah. Where, no, this, they're light. Your ears breathe. People can talk to you and you're still hearing. I mean, it's they're fantastic. All right. Since we're all down under today, it's time to put on your special Aussie cap. I'm going to do it with the flap up version. How do we have matching Aussie caps? This is a little weird. I'm just going to say. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're app capped today to show us, show you our Apps of the week. <laughs> like a sergeant, why don't you commence? <laughs> Mate. I, I'll get started. Yeah, put, put your app on the barbie. Right. And I apologize to all our uh, Australian listeners, of whom there are a great oh, many. Oh, my Lord. Um, now I can't even think of what my <laughs> app cap is. Okay, I am talking ScanBot, folks. Oh, I love ScanBot. ScanBot. So we talked travel, and this one made sense to me. If you're traveling, and it's for business in particular, uh, then you may have some things that need to get expensed or you may have uh may have not known that you had to pay a cash toll when you crossed the oh, bridge I hate it when that happens. and so you got a yellow card and it said hey uh go to this website and pay this toll you dummy <laughs> which may or may not have happened to me i don't know oh, and so being able to have mm. that <laughs> have that available uh with a simple scan is is very nice um so scanbot is pretty neat because of its it, it's not just the fact that i can take a photo and scan it's the smart sort of ai machine learning features that are built into it by setting down a, a form, a piece of paper, a receipt, what have you, as I start to scan, and of course I don't have um, a piece of paper in front of me to do this, but as I start to scan, it will automatically show the lines around the photo, the receipt, uh, whatever it might be, and you can set it so that it automatically scans for you automatically. I just said automatically twice. So that it automatically <laughs> scans automatic for you without having to think about it. I it's, wish I had a receipt. I don't yeah, save I receipts. I should have thought yeah. of one here. I've, I've got an idea. Yeah. You should have been saving receipts this whole time. Yes, and I do have some, but I'm not going to put those on. Instead, I will um, use this piece of paper as an example. Okay. Um, so it sees a piece of paper. Of course, now. But you know, it knows there's no writing on it. You can't fool the scan bot. Yeah, a scan bot will not be fooled. <laughs> I think it's because I just updated with iOS. Oh, of course, iOS 13 is breaking everything today. It is. Um, I'm going to look at my wallet, but I'm pretty sure. 
I didn't save any receipts. So, okay, here we go. I can show this. So typically it does an auto detection feature. Yeah. Um, Our entire social media team is in here <laughs> they're taking very photos excited about because we're wearing hats. matching hats. But if I tap detect here, you can see that it automatically moved those, those uh, little pick and move <laughs> spots from the outside. Oh, look, it, it did it. It adjusted it automatically to it it. Oh, the page. And so, you know, you might have crumb uh, edges that are a little crumbly up, like that. And I can take that Fix it. and move it down. Yeah, because you don't want the boss to see the crumples. Exactly. And then I tap done and it automatically so resizes it. It and scans anything though. It's not just yes. receipts. Yeah, yeah. It's not just receipts. It's not just uh, documents. It's whatever you want to put in front of it. What it's smart about is knowing when you've got, you know, a piece of paper or something like that. But the filtering features are what I like. So I can automatically adjust those uh, for grayscale, for just black and white and change brightness, color and contrast. It does those automatically as well. And then saving them. It automatically pops up some different oh, information. Oh, the tags. You might Look have at the tags. All these different tags based on the date, That's where fantastic. you've been. And then an last but not least yeah. is that all of my things in my library, OCR text recognition. Nice. So I can look for those later. Nice. That is uh, ScanBot. It does have an in-app purchase that makes it even more powerful. Um, but just those simple. Can you do business cards with it? Yeah, yeah, you can. That's and a great automatically way to add get... those to contacts yeah. and everything. People hand me business cards, and I almost always want to just give them back. Yeah. Because they're expensive. This, I know how much they cost nowadays. It's like 50 cents to a buck per business card. And I'm thinking, boy, if you handed out 100 business cards at this meeting, you're spending some money. So I always take a picture of it and hand it back. That's nice. I'm That's a nice guy. You, I know. Uh, can I have your business card? Oh, I don't have a oh, business okay. card. What do I need a business <laughs> card? Exactly. Why do we need those? People would just contact me, and I don't want that. Oh, no. So Apple's 10th anniversary of the App Store, because remember, we just had the 10th anniversary, or actually the 12th anniversary, didn't we? Uh, 2007, of the iPhone coming out. I got that one wrong. And it took them a little while to get the App Store out. For yes. a couple of years, you had to use the iPhone without apps. Was it the perfect solution? Yeah, I think Something. Steve Jobs said, oh, you don't need apps. <laughs> you just need websites. Thank goodness they finally came out with the App Store. And one of the very first apps was Texas Hold'em. And in honor of the 10th anniversary, Apple is bringing back the ultimate in skeuomorphic applications. <laughs> you can Texas. literally feel it on the screen. You can just, you can feel it. Uh, let me turn up the sound because it's got a, a kind of funky piano. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you feel like you're in a... Uh, like a, I don't know, a Vegas saloon. It's got single player, multiplayer, which is really cool. Uh, multiplayer, um, I don't know. Do you have to have it? Let's oh, see. No. Or is Let's it going to do, do this, this on the internet? Oh, yeah. So oh, let's quit neat. multiplayer right now. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't want to play any real people. Let me abandon the game I'm playing right now because I want to show you what are the cool things about this. This has a variety of locations. You'll start in the garage, but as you get better and better... You can move to the aquarium. Okay, maybe not a great place. A cruise ship. Oh, now we're in Paris. Casablanca. An ice bar, probably in Moskva. Roppongi, Tahiti, Las Vegas, or Macau. But an important thing to point out is as you move up, the buy-ins move up <laughs> and the blinds move up. But you can get a, a reward. So the way they've done this, which is great, is, you know, I let's say I want to, oh, I can't play there. I have to play in the garage to oh, start. Oh, you're still in the garage. No buy-in because I got no money. And I only get 125 bucks for first place. But it is really fun. Okay, tap the pot to see the total. I'm playing Miggy, Carlos, Tony, Whitney, Darla, Aaron, Phil, and Holly. Whitney's wearing our hat. Yeah. Now, you can choose. You don't get to take a picture of yourself. You choose from some characters. And you said I should be the hoodie guy, so... <laughs> I thought... Hoodie eh, Guy's amazing. I kind of look like Hoodie Guy, don't I? <laughs> uh, all right. Ooh, I got 8-9 suited. I'm, I'm in on this one. Let's tap the chips and bet $80. I'm going to call them. So some people are folding. To fold, you just swipe the cards in. It's got a very easy mechanics, and it really is skeuomorphic. You're sitting at a table with other poker players. Now, the bets to me, I only have 9 and 20 in my, uh, in my chip pot. It's just me and Miggy. He raised it 190 bucks. Boy, I think I think I'm gonna I think I'm I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna not only not only gonna I'm gonna raise him back. In fact, let me go all in. He could go all the way. All right, and he folded. I chased him. You know, he, Miggy did not have a strong hand. Now I'm getting there, 
But we got to we got to get some people out of the game. So let's see if we can play another hand. It is Texas Hold'em. You know, you have five cards. You get two in your hand. You got to bet on those first two. And then they're going to show you the river, three more cards. And then uh, you're going to get one more after that. Let's see if we can get through a whole hand here. I'll, I'll bet this junky hand. Normally, I would just do this, throw it. Oh, too bad I threw it in. Let's try again. Another junk hand. All right, I'm going to play this one. <sighs> I don't want to because she raised it 140 bucks. Holly looks Holly, like she Holly, might be Holly. really got something. Can't like see her eyes. Don't know what she's thinking. I know. Can't see anything. I mean, I completely <laughs> covered up everything. All right. It is $240 to call. I'm going to do that. Oh, he raised it. Miggy is really, you know what? I chased Miggy last time. Let me, let me just increase the bet a little bit there. See if we could chase Miggy again. Yep. Bye-bye, Miggy. And bye, my Holly. Oh, wow. That was pretty easy on a oh, junk wow. hand. But I still want to show you the full game. So let's play another. One more hand. You see how addictive this is. Yeah. Finally, I got a queen king. I'm going to get in there for 20 bucks. Let's see if we can get at least to the river. All right, Miggy. Miggy doesn't fold on anything. He's, in fact, raised me. So did Whitney. Holly raised 280 bucks. I'm going to I'm gonna call to stay in because I want to see. Miggy folds again. <laughs> Miggy, Miggy is basically an empty tent. Okay. Holly, uh, Whitney raises another 120 bucks. Let's let's play that much just to see the flop. That's the flop, rather not the river. And then, oh, uh, looks like uh, might have um, uh, an inside straight. Not much else. Eighty dollars. She obviously did not get the card she was hoping for. So I'm going to call her. Let's see what we get on the river. There's the turn. Six, seven, nine. I still need that eight. Or I mean the ten. You think I'm going to get the ten? I hope. Or a king. I'm going to call her. I, Ten would give me a straight pair of queens, though. I bet you got the hand here. Ooh, let's uh, let's see if we can get her to throw in a little more. She went all in. Oh, a pair of kings beats my pair of queens. I am out of the game. Oh, no. I didn't go all in. Whew. Whew. That was a relief. Yes. Anyway, you get the idea. Now I'm going to have to remember my poker terms. <laughs> that is, what do you call that? The flop. Then the next one is the turn. And then the last one is the river. Oh. Flop, turn, river. Flop, turn, All right. river. FTR. It's a good idea to play this game a hundred times before you watch it on TV. A thousand times before you actually bet any real money on it. If you like Texas Hold'em, which is a really fun form of poker. And this is, they've done a nice job. The music gets a little tiring because it never changes. Um, to go all in, drag all your chips. Why not? A 2-3. What could be the 2-3? <laughs> I'm gonna. I just think I dumped myself out of that. Wouldn't it be funny? Oh my God! I just got a straight. <laughs> I won. <laughs> you can't. You can't. You know what? It's you can't hat, beat. You can't beat draw skill. Drawing skills. That's the key in poker. Got to have great skills at drawing cards. Ladies and gentlemen, it is. It was the hat that won the game. Mm -hmm. I think so. Yep. Thank you all for joining us on iOS today. Thank you for being so kind to Micah yes. and welcoming him to our new family. Uh, Megan, we'll have Megan back. Uh, in fact, I'm going to take a little time off, and I think Megan's going to come in at the end of the month. Really? Yeah. How exciting. So, so uh, we'll, we'll have Megan back so you can say a proper goodbye to her. Uh, but, uh, hey, welcome, Micah Sargent and the Thank new you. iOS Today. We do iOS Today still. Oh. No, oh, look, they even got your picture in there. That's so fast. Nice. Look at that. We do iOS Today uh, every Tuesday around about 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern time, 1600 UTC. If you want to tune in, twit.tv slash live. We have live audio and video of the show. You can also, uh, if you want to email us your questions, your comments, your suggestions, and I would love to get more audio and video yeah. questions. Can I? Can we like put it back? Is it on me? All right. Listen, I'm begging you. <laughs> I'm I'm not too proud to beg y'all. Give him a single man. Give us give Zoom us some in. audio. Give us some video. <laughs> Let's We've see got, those eyes. Please. Yeah. Are, are He's they not actually attention looking at detection? You. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking below the camera, but you can't tell. Send us in some audio and video. We love to be able to hear those, play those back, and so answer your questions. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And oh, now we're also, pushing. There we go. There please. You go. Can you play in the arms of an angel? Do -do. Yeah. So please go ahead and send those in. We would love it. I'm getting a little uncomfortable, <laughs> so <much>. but I, <laughs> so is Leo. We're both sweating. Uh, but yeah, send in those videos. We really would love 
love that. Make them 30 seconds or less. Start them with your first name and city only. And uh, you can email, either record them and put them on YouTube or email them directly to iOS today at twit.tv. On demand versions of the show are available at our website, twit.tv slash iOS or in your favorite podcast application. In fact, may I encourage you to subscribe? That way you don't want to miss a single episode. You'll get it every Tuesday afternoon. The minute it's available, open your podcast app or go to twit.tv slash subscribe. And we've got all the information there. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on iOS Today. And now here's a part of the show where we throw the hats. Bye-bye.